Does this sound familiar? You have belly pain, flatulence, diarrhea. You feel constipated or bloated. And not just once or twice a year, but over and over again, sometimes for days or weeks on end. You're tired, exhausted, depressed. You have headaches. You're in pain. And what do the doctors say? They're looking for signs of inflammation. They perform an ultrasound, a colonoscopy, allergy tests. They look for all kinds of illnesses. Mm. Only when the doctors haven't found anything will you get the diagnosis, irritable bowel syndrome. The diagnosis is hazy and it's a long time coming. And treatment, it's like groping around in the dark. <gasps> a change of diet and eating habits, uh... psychotherapy and stress management. <sighs> Depending on the main symptom, medication for diarrhea, constipation or pain, uh... antibiotics, sometimes antidepressants as well. It works for some, for others, it doesn't. Sometimes it alleviates the symptoms for a short time, sometimes for longer. Many things are tried with little success. Treating IBS is a matter of trial and error. This frustrates patients mm. and it frustrates doctors. Mm. And you still feel bloated, constipated, suffer from diarrhea, urgency and have belly pains. What do researchers say? For them, irritable bowel syndrome, or IBS for short, is a complex disease. Many factors contribute to IBS. Few of them are understood. Mm. IBS negatively impacts the quality of life for many and is a huge financial burden on society. Irritable bowel syndrome has a genetic element. Lifestyle, eating habits, infections and stress play a role too, though. They can cause the disease to break out or make an existing condition worse. Researchers assume there's a communication disturbance in the nerve pathways between the brain and the gut. Irritable bowel syndrome is a chronic disease that requires long-term treatment. Yet only when we fully understand the disease will we be able to treat it correctly. Only when we have identified the responsible genetic factors will we be able to distinguish between patient subgroups and to choose the correct method of treatment for each. Only then will all the people who are suffering from irritable bowel syndrome regain their quality of life.